Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org, and on this episode of HeadFi TV, we're going to go back a couple of weekends to Denver, Colorado. We were at Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest 2012, and it was an awesome event. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to interview all of the exhibitors at Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, but we were able to catch up with a lot of them. And we're going to release those interviews, maybe one or two per episode at a time, here on the HeadFi TV channel, so make sure to subscribe so that you're updated every time we upload one. Now today we're going to start with JH Audio and Lantos Technologies. Now if you've been paying attention to JH Audio either on their website or their blog, or if you've been reading some of the coverage on uh, HeadFi with uh, regard to Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest this year, you may have seen something called Freak Phase, a new technology by JH Audio. It's spelled F-R-E-Q, Phase, Freak Phase. And if you've read about it, maybe it sounds to you like marketing jargon, but I want to assure you it's not just marketing jargon. If you actually examine uh, the inside, of a freak phase earpiece, you will actually immediately notice there are definitely differences between it and every other custom in-ear monitor currently available. So it is doing something uh, novel, uh, that, but I'll let Jerry tell you exactly what it's doing uh, in just a minute. Uh, we also talked to Jen Rossi from Lantos Technologies, and Lantos was actually exhibiting with JH Audio, and it was a great pairing because what Lantos has is a technology, a new technology, for taking ear impressions, it's actually very novel, and I'll let Jen Rossi tell you about that in just a minute. Let's start, though, with Jerry Harvey. We're with Jerry Harvey at JH Audio, Can Jam at RMAF 2012. I think a lot of head fires know who Jerry is, and he's going to tell us about something called Freak Phase. I love the name. Jerry, what's Freak Phase? Well, it was, um, it was a period in my life. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, actually, it's... Um, uh, Freak Phase is actually a, a waveguide system for an in-ear monitor, which allows all of the frequencies of the, like a low driver, mid driver, high driver, to arrive within 100 milliseconds of each other. So when everything arrives in time, you end up with a, uh, basically a perfectly coherent phase curve in an ear, in ear monitor or a speaker or whatever. So phase is your friend. So kind of what happens is if, a, if a, you have bad phase curve in a headphone or an in-ear monitor, if you pan something hard right and hard left, it's, it sounds like it's really out there. It sounds like it's got a really nice uh, sound stage. But then if you pay attention to the, between 10 and 2, any kind of phase cancellation is going to make it feel like there, make it sound like there's no articulation and no, um, no distinction between the, the instruments. So you'll, you'll find out that when you listen to something that's phase correct, that if something's five or ten degrees off center in a pan, it'll actually be five or ten degrees, and all the instruments will layer very nicely. Um, if it's out of phase, like I said, that will just kind of get saturated sounding, and there's no clarity between the instruments. So the the 13 and the 16 are the only phase correct in-ear monitors on the planet right now, and it's all because of the freak phase waveguide that I've designed to put everything in perfect time. So how can I get into my freak phase? So what is it? Which products? Uh, just the 13 and the 16, any of the triple bores. So in order to make the 13 actually phase correct, we had to change it from a, a dual bore to a triple bore. So now, you know, the bottom end, everything is just so spot on now because there's no phase cancellation across the frequencies. All right, I'm going to have to listen. I haven't heard any of the freak phase pieces yet. Uh, the, so it's essentially it's a new 13 and a 16 using freak phase, correct? I mean, uh, if you want it, it's the later versions. When, 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 when do they start going out or are they going out now? Well, we start shipping on Monday, so we start shipping as soon as we get back to the lab. Uh, the, uh, and it, it, you're right, it's actually it's still this 13 and 16 configuration, but what we have is, um, since it's phase correct, we had to retune the earpieces, but I've still got them within 1 dB of the original audio uh, signature, just they sound so much cleaner and so much fuller and so much more detailed. So I've had a half dozen people that have the old 13s, and you know, molded, and they've been listening to the 13, uh, just a generic with the freak phase, and they they're blown away. Kind of, actually, a few of them are angry at me because I didn't do it sooner. But basically, they they've heard they hear a huge difference in the separation and the layering of the instruments, and you know, just the overall sound stage. Awesome. Well, I'm going to have to do that. I have uh, one of the first JH13s, but now I'm going to have to get into the freak phase. Jerry Harvey from JH Audio, thanks for explaining freak phase for us. I'm going to have to get my freak phase on. And uh, uh, rock and roll, JH is a legend. Cool. Thanks a lot, Jude. Appreciate it. Take care, guys. Hi, this is Jude at the JH Audio booth. And I'm here with Jen Rossi from Lantos? Lantos Technologies. Lantos Technologies. Now, Jerry Harvey's been talking to me about this technology for a while. It's supposed to uh, be a new way, an easier way, a better way to get an ear impression 
Um, he's really excited about it. I can understand why now that it's been explained to me. I'm going to let Jen explain to me why is this a cool innovation with respect to ear impressions for audiophiles anyway, custom in-ear monitors, for example. Okay. So this is our scanner, the Lantos 3D Ear Canal Scanner. And basically, this scanner uh, replaces the impression process. So it was developed in the laboratory at MIT. It's a very technical device. Um, normally what you would do, if you go to the audiologist to take an impression for your custom inner ear monitors, the audiologist takes that impression, takes five, 10 minutes while you're sitting there with the impression in your ear. Um, they put it in a box and they have to ship it off to the manufacturer. So what our scanner does is you put it in the ear, you go in your ear just like a video otoscope like your audiologist would do, and they see it on the screen as they're going in to your ear. Uh, there's a membrane that inflates and inside the membrane are some optical dyes and as it's inflated, begins to take images of inside of the ear and the probe retracts and continues to take images as it's retracting. And then these images are stitched together with some uh, very elegant software engineering algorithms and builds the 3D model of your ear. So this way, what you have is a direct 3D model. You, can, you submit it and then the manufacturer can just access that. It's a cloud-based application. All they need to do is access it from the cloud. So it's direct, direct scanning of the ear directly sent over to the, um, or accessible by the manufacturer, no mailing, no packaging. It takes about 60 seconds, so it's a lot shorter than an impression. Um, and it's uh, easy and straightforward to do. How long does a typical, right now we use silicone, yep. how long does a silicone impression take, and again, how long does that one take? So a silicone impression usually takes, I think the shortest is about five minutes, but sometimes up to 10 minutes, I suppose, but to be fair, we'll say five minutes. And the Lanto scan takes about 60 seconds per ear. Very cool. So, okay, so here's uh, another question. Any disadvantage relative to, say, a silicone impression in terms of precision or anything else? Um, in terms of precision, no. Uh, we're doing all kinds of studies that we're, we're going to be able to demonstrate that. Um, the only thing is you need to have a scanner. So I suppose uh, if you don't have a scanner, you can't do a scan. <laughs> but you need a scanner, and uh, silicone is a lot the traditional method. So everyone right now has a silicone method. And the idea is, of course, uh, audiologists will eventually have this. Yes, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the idea. So it'll be on the market in early 2013, hopefully around January time frame or so. Um, and then it will be commercially available to audiologists worldwide. So maybe next year here at RMAF I can get impressions with Lantos? I would love that. That would, that would be great. Fant I fantastic. do a Lantos one on you. All right. Come back next year, Jen. I want Lantos impressions. You'll get one. No problem. Right, fantastic. Thanks to Jen Rossi, Lantos Technologies. That's right. And uh, hopefully we'll get some Lantos impressions next year.